Our final speaker today is Dr. Don Berwick, President Emeritus and Senior Fellow at the Institute for Healthcare Improvement and former Administrator of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, we're honored to have him as a member of Nickham Foundation's Advisory Board and he serves on many boards, including uh, the Board of Advisors of Shatterproof that Suzanne just mentioned, and we'll hear more about um, <clears throat> their, uh, their organization today. We're so honored to have him with us this afternoon to, to offer his perspective. Dr. Berwick? Thank you very much, Catherine, and uh, it's a pleasure to join you, and uh, let me congratulate Nick on their leadership here. Uh, it's a pleasure to follow Catherine and Sherry and Eric and Suzanne. Uh, I'm so inspired by the uh, degree of Commitment that uh, that stamps are sowing to this, and the examples of Anthem and Horizon, they, they give me a lot of hope for the future. Um, I want to take just a few minutes to acquaint the people that are listening with two other opportunities to get involved with national efforts that I happen to know about or be involved with. Uh, to add further uh, more arrows to your quiver, if you want to get involved with uh, fighting this this terrible problem, the need is clear. You've seen the data. The ideas about what to do are robust, and the problem now is action, how to get to scale. Um, I um, have the, the pleasure of uh, working um, uh, part of my time with uh, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, the organization I founded and used to lead. <laughs> IHI is a nonprofit that works around the world on important issues in improving healthcare. It has adopted work on substance abuse as a core mission. Some of the contexts here are, uh, are on the slide. But what I want to specifically talk about uh, with you is the IHI Open School, because it's something that you can get involved with. The Open School was started by IHI about eight years ago now. It was a virtual environment for uh, young professionals in preparation to get involved with each other, to study quality improvement, patient-centeredness, uh, issues in healthcare policy that they weren't getting instructed in the professional schools. It covers all professions. Uh, all, all students in all professions, including medicine, nursing, pharmacy, health administration, industrial engineering, uh, it's massive now. There are over um, there are over almost 600,000 people connected in 90 countries in 900 chapters around around the planet, um, both in the U.S. and abroad. Uh, I'll just say editorially, any of you on this line that want to study quality improvement and get involved can get can get connected to the Open School. It's available to lots of different categories of people. But one of the important parts of the Open School has been linkage to IHI's work on opioid addiction and substance abuse, which you can get connected to if you wish. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement in, uh, in 2016 published the white paper, the address of which you see here, which is a framework for addressing the opioid crisis uh, in the United States. That white paper is accessible to you. If you go to IHI.org slash resources, you can get it, and it, is, it offers a framework for action. This is also available in a, in a digested form in a health affairs blog that appeared in June of 2016, which basically summarizes the IHI framework. It's not dissimilar at all from what you've heard from Kath, Catherine and Sherry and Eric and Suzanne. We're all working from the same scientific deck of cards. This is the so-called driver diagram that comes from that white paper, a driver diagram in IHI speak. It, it's kind of uh, it's a it's a it's a model of action, which is or a logic chain, which which moves from the left side here with the goal of addressing the opioid crisis in the community through fundamental lines of action, which you've heard the other speakers speak about, to a, a list of uh, areas of intervention, uh, change processes that one can engage in to tackle the goal. Uh, the, the big goal. Um, this provides an action framework for anything IHI does, including tackling the opioid epidemic. What's happened, and it's very, it's very recent in the past month, is that the IHI Open School overall has adopted uh, a campaign on substance abuse as its primary activity over the next two years. In addition to the education work that the IHI Open School is doing with over 500,000 young professionals, it's reaching out. It's going to reach out through its chapters to work on substance abuse communities all over the world, but also, of course, uh, primarily here in, in the United States. Um, I'm on behalf of the Open School issuing an invitation to anyone on the phone. If you want to get some young people, youth, young professionals involved in your work on the opioid epidemic, you can do it. Uh, the, there's a chapter map available on the website of the Open School, which will allow you to locate an Open School chapter near you. 
And I'm hoping that at least some of you, if not most of you on the phone, will try to connect over to that open school chapter. This is a source of energy and momentum and optimism and, frankly, hard work that you will have uh, trouble beating. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing resource. An open school chapter is a, geographically located. It will be in a city, and there will have, there'll be young professionals who have assembled in the chapter, and they have to be from at least three different professional schools. You'll find medicine, nursing, and pharmacy, or nursing, pharmacy, and industrial engineering. So, you, so it's automatically a multidisciplinary effort. So the first invitation to you and my, my ask of you for action is connect to your open school chapter locally if, if, you want to get in, uh, if you are involved in fighting the substance abuse epidemic and, or if you want to get engaged with a group of young people that are doing that. It's really exciting work. I met with about uh, 50 of these people last week here at IHI as they made their plans uh, for the next steps they're going to take in, in launching what's going to be an international campaign on substance abuse. You've already heard about Shatterproof and Suzanne's comments, and I want to say a couple words about this before I stop. Shatterproof is the brainchild of founder Gary Mendel. Gary uh, is a highly respected executive in the American commercial scene. He led, the, I think, the largest hotel company in the country. Uh, sadly, uh, Gary's son, uh, Brian, became addicted to marijuana, and uh, over a tragic uh, uh, period of his life, by his mid-20s, he had become um, severely addicted and eventually uh, took his own life. Uh, Gary decided to leave his work uh, as, a, as a commercial entrepreneur and start a nonprofit organization, Shatterproof, whose mission is to uh, end substance abuse in the country. Uh, I have the privilege of serving on the board of advisors to Shatterproof, and I'll tell you a little more about their work. But this is a second invitation. In addition to the IHI Open School, you have an opportunity to get involved with Shatterproof, and I hope many of you will. Uh, it's responding to the uh, gravity of the epidemic that you heard from Catherine Power and others. Um, the, uh, the burden is enormous, and in particular, Gary's targeting the lack of availability of evidence-based treatment to uh, to victims of substance abuse in so many parts of the country. The, pro the work of Shatterproof is enormous, and I urge you to go to their website so you can learn more about everything they're doing. But one particular arm that I'm going to talk about works from the, uh, with the advice of the Substance Abuse Disorder Treatment Task Force that I serve on with other, uh, others who are even more expert uh, than some of us on the phone uh, in substance abuse disorders. The concept was to use that task force to guide Shatterproof toward um, evidence-based planning for accessible treatment to every American who has a substance abuse disorder. Uh, through the past uh, two years, Shatterproof has gone through a very disciplined uh, effort to understand and summarize evidence-based treatment, the evidence behind evidence-based treatment addiction, and to develop what uh, Suzanne referred to as national principles of care. Drawing from the evidence base, Shatterproof has identified eight areas of action listed on this slide, which, are, which represent the activities that Shatterproof are going to be engaging in to uh, bring the science of uh, substance abuse care uh, into widespread practice uh, around the country. Now, it has a whole strategic plan laid out now with many elements, uh, which I won't recite to you on the phone. Uh, there are two that I want to call your attention to in particular. The first is uh, focusing on the, um, on the uh, engagement of providers and payers in the action plan to work on those, on those, principles, on those principles of care. Uh, for those of you who are payers on the phone, you've already heard from, uh, from Suzanne that a number of payers, it's now up to 16 or more, have signed on to the Shatterproof Evidence-Based Principles and are commit, say they're committing to, um, to moving their payer-based activities to support the widespread deployment of the evidence-based practices that we've been hearing about uh, on this phone call. The payers are, are committing to identify, promote, and reward care that aligns with those principles, to work with the task force to monitor the implementation strategies, and then to develop a learning community so that other organizations can learn about um, how to use their leverage to improve access to high-quality care. Uh, the payers have signed on and received widespread attention. Horizon is one of them, and I'm very grateful to Horizon for their willingness to step up. 
I don't see why any payer in the country would not sign on to the Shatterproof principles and constitute a payer learning community to bring these principles into action as fast as they possibly can. So the first domain of action of the five that I listed is pr pr provider is payer activation. The second is a rating scheme, which is now being developed so that there can be public and professional understanding of the degree of quality of care being offered by the treatment programs that the providers that the payers are are covering. We heard from uh, from Sherry, Eric, and Suzanne about how difficult it is to make sure that the treatment provided is um, is of high quality. Right now, Shatterproof is already working on a rating system that will, if it's successfully carried out, and I think it will be allow allow a public um, assessment of the degree of adherence of treatment programs to the best known science to inform con con consumers so they can select where they're treated, to inform providers so they can learn from each other about how better to adopt the uh, evidence-based uh, treatments, payers to connect uh, their payment mechanisms to incentives for high-quality care, and to governments, licensors, who, and others who want to identify and certify high-quality care. I could go on at length, but I won't, about Shatterproof. It's got a very, very broad swath of activities. I think Gary is taking every, every ounce of his skill and energy uh, as a highly successful uh, uh, businessman into the nonprofit work of trying to end this, uh, this dreadful epidemic. So just as I'm urging you to please sign on to uh, the IHI Open School, find the chapter near you, get involved. Uh, this is the contact information if you want to connect over to Shatterproof, and I, I urge everyone on the phone to do that. Catherine, I'll stop here, and I welcome participation in the questions and answers.